Hey guys, welcome to Easy Synth Programming Lesson 7, where we're going to be using Centorial to learn about the amp envelope sustain phase. Hey guys, my name is Michael Carrillo, aka Hexspot, and welcome to my channel. I make music and do music making tutorials, so you can subscribe on YouTube or look in the description for many other ways that you can support me. So we're going to be going into lesson seven in this tutorial and learn about the amp envelope sustain, like I mentioned. And this is part of the ADSR envelope where you have the attack, which is how long it takes the sound to get to max volume. You have the decay, which how long it takes to go from the max volume to the sustain phase, which we're going to learn about now. And then when you release the key, goes into a release phase. Some people think there's a sustain time because the other three parts of an ADR, ADSR envelope are time-based, attack in milliseconds, release, and decay. But the sustain phase is unique in the sense that it's how, how loud the sound stays when you keep a key depressed. So in this case, if you have a sustain level of zero and you keep the key depressed, after the decay phase, it will make no sound. But in contrast, if you have the sustain level at max, you hold the key and it will sustain indefinitely. Although that will be somewhat unnatural for certain styles, um, it's good. Dead Mouse uses that. So here we go. I'm gonna watch the lesson and I'll see you on the other side. All right, let's do this first challenge. Here's your sustain level slider. I feel like the sustain is just down a little, but I don't think that much. Let's try it. So the attack was somewhat slow. Yeah, so the sustain is full. You can hear there that it's more like a pluck, and it has almost instantaneous attack, almost like a bass, like a bass guitar. You can hear it more on the low, low octaves. But as I hold the key, it doesn't fade all the way to zero. That one does sound like it's fading all the way to zero. Yeah, yeah that one's, um, sustaining yeah! it's your classic pluck The decay time is already preset for these. Yeah! Yeah! Next lesson. So now he's added the decay time, which is and the volume knob. So let's say the sustain level is zero, because if it's 100%, the decay doesn't matter because it goes instantly well here instantly to full volume or here two and a half seconds to full volume and if the sustain 
is 100%, then it has nothing to decay to. Decay is like a tooth, you know, if you're sustained, if you're, let's say this is your tooth's enamel, this is bacteria. If your enamel is completely intact, there is no decay. But if your enamel is already really messed up, then this is how long it'll take to get to wherever your teeth are. And that was a terrible example, but you know what I mean. So yeah, sustain level, if it's here or here, this matters. If it's here, this doesn't matter. This always matters. If you listen, that pluck, the attack sounds louder than the body of the sound. So let's listen to it. Here it's got a snap on it, almost like a compressed sound. It's almost like the compressor kicking in. So right now we're not worrying about the attack phase, so we're going to have always 100% or a zero millisecond attack. But you can hear that the decay is really short. I don't know if it's zero milliseconds, but maybe. No. That's weird. Okay, so you guys turn the volume up. Yeah! That's a cool sound. Sustain seems to be at zero and the decay is not much, but it's not as snappy as the last one. Once again, he kicks up the volume. It's kind of a long decay, and it doesn't seem to sustain. Okay, that's just the spitting image of a clicky sound. I'm gonna guess that he turned the volume up some. Seems like it. Okay, that's a really long decay, but does it decay completely? Yeah, it does. That seems like the same curve. Yep. You hear how it just kind of hangs out? So that's maybe that, and then I don't know how long it took. It didn't take too long. It's not 5,000. Yeah, okay. Quiz time. Which amp envelope stage determines what level the volume moves to after the attack stage is finished? 
this is like a Jeopardy question where they they phrase it crazy. He's just talking about the decay stage. So it's part of the amp envelope, just like any uh, envelope, really. I think as far as I've encountered, all envelopes are composed of the same parts. The A, D, S, R. Maybe they have a loop in there. And then there's um, some other tiny variations, but pretty much you got one of those letters in them, if not more or less. So it doesn't matter that it's an amp envelope. This is just envelopes in general. And, and it just so happens in this case, it's assigned to um, the amp, uh, the fire <laughs> in, this, in the synth, however, however it's, you know, whether it's uh, hardware or software. So yeah, envelope, it's assigned to the amp stage. And we want to know what part of that ADSR envelope determines what level the volume moves to after the attack stage is finished. moves to yeah well it moves to the sustain level um but this is kind of funny because it almost hints at the decay part so attack decay sustain what level the moves to it should be after the after the decay stage is finished yeah it should because <laughs> which envelope stage determines what level the volume moves to after the attack stage is finished. It sh I know that the answer is sustain, but it sh they should have said after the decay stage is finished, but okay. Which envelope, amp envelope stage determines how long it takes for the volume to reach the sustain level. Yeah, that's your decay. What unintended side effect occurs when combining a very short decay time with a low sustain level? Um, unintended? The sound gets bigger. Why would it get bigger? That doesn't even make any sense. A short decay time, the sound gets louder. No. The sound gets quieter. <laughs> These are the weirdest questions. Uh, the sound gets meaner. Okay, we know it's not that, and I don't think it's bigger or louder. So it gets quieter? A short decay time with low sustain level. How is that unintended? You want it to get quieter. What do we call a short spike of sound at the very beginning of a note? Um, the most common term w would be the attack transient, okay? It's, as far as I understand, defined by the high frequency content, so it's always kind of a sound. It's never like a bass, a really low bass sound. I guess, by definition, even a sine wave wouldn't have a transient unless it happened so fast that the high frequencies were generated as a byproduct. But what do we call a short spike of sound? A sonic burst sound spike, audio punch to the face, attack transient. I was hoping to go for that next octave. Does this sound have an it's a prominent attack transient? No. That does. Full amp envelope. Now it's time to combine all. Okay, I'm not gonna watch that. Um, now we're doing all the whole ADSR and volume. Let's start. Okay. You'll notice that the attack was kind of squishy. And I don't know. We have to play it. That's sustaining forever. But you hear the re release phase two? Can't ignore that. It's not zero.
Where's my hint button? Oh, it's not a group. Yeah! That's a poppy sound. Listen to this. You hear how mine cuts off immediately? And that one almost sounds like it has a reverb tail on, on that, on the end. Check out my other video on uh, the release. I don't know if it's amp, attack release, or filter, it's whatever. It's pretty much the same kind of effect. But on the amp envelope, you hear the reverb effect, as opposed to this. That sound, that now mine sounds choked, whereas that one's a little bit more relaxed, yeah. Okay, I think it's the same. Yeah. It's a very, again, poppy sound, decaying all the way. But you see, when I tap the key, the decay is way, or the release is much longer. Gotta be careful. Now let's hold it down. Another very poppy sound, but it's sustaining. The decay was pretty short. Always gotta check that release though, man. It's like the trick question part of it. He expects you to know this. Okay, I want to point out these sym symmetrical envelopes here, where the decay time and the release time are the same, where the sustain level is at max. So pretty much, um, I don't know, you'll notice that these, they have a special characteristic to them. I think it's pretty much whether you tap the key or hold it, it has the same kind of rise up and fall. Whereas if this was down, I don't know, like you have to experiment with it, but um, when you have it like this, it, I don't know, it seems like it has a special character. Bum, bum. Maybe I'm thinking like this when the sustain is down, but yeah. So whether I hold it or I just tap it, it's the exact same sound. See, pretty much. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah! Yeah! Group time. Oh, the group. So this is what we have so far. We have our oscillator section with our two oscillator shapes the mix knob pulse width for your pulse or yeah for your pulse waves semi to pitch your second octave which you'd have to use your mix your filter cutoff you know what that sounds like your envelope amount which will be we went into this watch the video amp envelope which we just filled in the blank on the sustain slider here the value the level volume we had that and then delay don't forget about that I will remind you that I'm doing these challenges 
with two speaker systems. I have a mix cube, just one. It's behind my monitor. I wish I could move my monitor out of the way, but that's how it is. Um, I do have some acoustic treatment, which helps. And I have two Yamaha HS50s. That's the old version of the new HS5. Um, the new HS5 supposedly is better, so check those. If you can, get the 8s. Those are the best. And I do have the sub. So I, I know it's a good system, but um, you could even do a sub with your HS8s. People might think, why would you do that? Well, quick bonus tip. It's because if you balance out your room modes the right way, because your room has dimensions, it's going to have like a peak and a null. It's going to alternate. If you can balance those out... Um, with low frequency generating things like subwoofers or speakers, you can actually even out your bass response. It's not going to help your decay time. It's not going to um, prevent other types of destructive interference from reflections and yeah, constructive, but it will balance out your bass. So don't think because you have good extension on your two speakers that you can't improve your sound with an extra sub. I haven't worked with that personally, and it does not negate the need for acoustic treatment, um, particularly if you're recording. Like, what good does two subwoofers do you? Nothing. Um, but yes, let's get started. Oh yeah, and I'm starting on the mix cube because it limits my options. It's like looking through a, you know, a magnifying glass. You're just moving that around. You can get details about the mid range. Then I add the highs in the in the bass. You know, the super highs don't have a ton of character, and the bass doesn't either. It's just either it's there at the right level or it's not. So that's my approach. And wait for this airplane. All right, let's do it. Joe's hitting us with the dissonance. Now, I think we're on some kind of pulse. Okay. I thought it was sort of narrow, but not totally narrow. And I thought it was pitched differently. Like a, was it a fifth? Maybe it was like 19. I'm not entirely sure. The decay was there. I'm just going to guess it's around. I know there was a delay. I don't think the filter was cut down too much. And I didn't hear an envelope. What else? Did we, hear? we definitely heard some delay. I think it was more like eighth notes. The feedback was healthy. Again, I can't hear the stereo, whether there's stereo spread or not on a mix on a single speaker, obviously. But all these characteristics of the sound besides the um, spatial effects even including the spatial effects you can hear it with a mix cube but um, obviously it's not the same with uh, all the high frequencies you get with uh, a full range system um, yeah so this that's what I remember let's let's uh, check it out okay that was pretty close holy crap Now the mix is too high. Now is is my how's my feedback? Oh jeez, what's this? I feel like my de my delay Echo, like my my feet my delay is too uh, bright I don't know if that's because of my filter envelope maybe so attack no I don't think so but let's uh, let's listen on the other speakers in here wait Oh yeah, here, here. It's because there's a spread out. If you're using headphones right now, you can hear that. Or if you're using on, listening on regular stereo speakers. But see, I couldn't hear that in the mix cube. That they're spread out. I could hear that the sound was different. It sounds also like there's an EQ difference, and that is the benefit of the mix cube. So yeah. That sounds the same to me. Let's go back to the mix cube. I'm convinced that it's the same. Let me hold down a key. 
Yeah, the decay is, I mean, the sustain level is definitely zero. I don't hear any filter stuff happening besides this. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the hint button to see if I'm wrong about anything. No, I'm not. Remember guys, when you're first getting started on this, um, you're going to want to probably just dive in and just start twisting stuff. But as you go on, or even it would be a great way to start, try to remember the sound as you heard it, and don't play your sound until you have dialed in what you think the sound is. This will help you um, match your, uh, your, your perception, it'll strengthen your memory, and it'll develop your connection with your synth. Um, if you just start twisting knobs, it's too easy to kind of turn your brain off. And just the best advice I ever got for ear training was think about what you're hearing. Don't go to your instrument and just start finding out what the notes are by trial and error. Julian Bradley, if you don't know about him, I'm not affiliated with him, but it was his advice that's helped me tremendously. So, yeah, I was at... A restaurant today and outside they were advertising some symphonic event and they had little music notes and just like my old roommate I was just reading I was like reading it you know and I'm like imagining the um, the various intervals and you know that's how you strengthen your relative pitch and so this is not that much different think about what it is even if you're listening to a record imagine what could the sounds be don't first jump on YouTube or start reading blogs um, or f posting on forums, oh, how do you do this? Think about it. Think about what kind of technology did they have available. So just like this, what sounds can I make with these controls? It's, it's important. That's a cool sound. It's very pulsy. It sounds like a fifth. But it was really high. Watch me be wrong. No, but I thought it was... Uh, it, it might have been a pulse. It might have been. The filter was down a little. I remember the sustain was all the way down. It was a very tight kind of attack. Um, it, it seems to have a symmetrical release. So whether he's holding the key down or letting go, the decay is the same. I'm not hearing no delay. No. Oh shit. Well, whatever. I think I just spread this out too far. I think it's maybe this kind of seventh. Just turn it up a little or open up the cutoff some. Pretty close, right? That's freaking it. But. I am going to double check on the big speakers. Sounds even better there. Let's hit hint. Perfect. Two for two. Yeah! What is that? Is that two octaves? And then what else do we have? There's some delay. Okay. It wasn't mixed in that much. And hear how the echoes are all jumbled? That means spread is all the way to the right. And the time was probably more like eighth notes. The feedback is probably there. I don't think this mix is in favor of oscillator 2. Um, the sustain is there. I don't know if it's 100%. And I don't think it's, you know, a very high cutoff. Let me play it.
It does seem to have an attack transient on it, though, if I'm honest. But it's not fading to zero. Well, I flipped over and played it, but I think I'm close. The only difference, I think, is his sustain is all the way up. Whoa. And then maybe just turn the volume up a little bit. No. That's not it. Why am I getting this, like, fade-in sound? Okay. What's going on here? I was closer. Is his attack up slightly or something? Okay. What's going on? I was right about this. Mine's like too plucky for some reason. Maybe sustain level is up. What is this? Maybe the decay is longer. That's it, yeah. No, it's not it. I think he's got some, uh, what is this? I think our feedback needs to come up some. Check on the yammies. I think that's it. Hint. Three for three. Next. Again, is that two octaves? 
it sounds like some kind of pulse, but not, it could be narrow. I originally thought it was medium though, so I'll go with that. The mix is up about 50-50. What else? No delay. Not hearing a lot of filter movement. But I am hearing a sustain of two. We got kind of like an 1890, what do they call it? Yeah, decay, release, sorry. I really didn't mean to do that. See, I, I hate to do that. The filter's down. I'm not hearing the decay to be very long, though. Longer than that. Is that, is that it? I get suspicious when it's that easy. Okay, hint, hint. Perfect! Filters way down on that one. But I don't think that it moves. We haven't had one with any kind of filter envelope in it. That's like a five, at least five second decay time. I don't know where the filter is going to be. I think it's just going to be one octave, is it? Confused. Oh, because that last patch went so fast. I literally didn't even realize I'm on this patch. <laughs> Sounds fine, right? Okay, that's freaky. It's got some delay, huh? It's like half no delay. Mixed in not much, filtered down. That's weird. So we have a short decay, uh, zero sustain, I think it's got one of these for the release, ah shoot, yeah that's true there's a, where are we here? I think we have some semi, like three octaves actually. Here. 
here I am doing as I do, not as I say. Huh, sounds a little different. I think we're pretty close, man. I, I'm not sure how much more close I can get. I think it's the same. Yeah, man, six for six. Error free. Yeah! Yeah! So there you have it, guys. Um, the amp envelope sustain level. It's part of the ADSR, but it's unique in that it's the only one that's a, a level, not a time. So it is the secret to plucks, sustaining sounds, and also, you know, like bass sounds. If you want a more natural bass, that goes boom, boom, but maybe doesn't decay all the way. Like an electric bass with some distortion, it'll, it'll decay, um, but in sustain, but not completely decay away and not completely sustain. So uh, in Centorial or primer, the synth that Centorial uses. Um, the sustain level only has three values. Zero, uh, I guess dB, 0 0.2, so you got 20% of your level, and then you have full. Um, and that's for training purposes. You know, obviously if you're just getting started and you need to manually manipulate uh, every value to, you know, the extreme degree, it's easy to get lost. Uh, 
for the trees in the forest or something like that. So if you're new to Synths, be sure to check out Centorial. I have a link in the description, which if you click, I will, well, it's free to download. But if you ever decide to buy it, I will get a certain percentage of that sale. It costs you no extra. I would appreciate it a ton. This program has helped me a lot. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making videos on it. Um, I've already been through the program once. I'm going through it again because teaching is learning and students are teachers. So leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. And if you want to be, if you want to get extra content, then become a patron. Head on over to patreon.com slash hexpa now. And for $3 a month, you will get uh, weekly bonus trainings. Um, if I miss a week, don't get mad. Like last week I missed, but it's okay. Uh, but I'll be releasing extra content on these um, easy synth programming videos. Uh, what, I'll be using Massive, okay? First time I went through, I used Analogs or Ableton's Analog. Um, I used that a ton, did songs with it. You can listen to my, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, Superstar Unlimited, I think has Analog on it. I don't know what other ones, but now I'm using Massive. You know, it's much more advanced synth. So for the patrons, I'm going through the On Your Own challenges, which you can see next on screen. Um, and that's assignments Joe gives to further, you know, go above and beyond the training inside of the program. It's like homework. So, yeah, patrons get access to that, three bucks a month. A dollar a month gets you um, direct chat with me. Um, it's, and what else? For a dollar, you also get uh, links. You know, I go on YouTube. Um, this is what I do all day, so I find cool videos, and I give you guys playlists and stuff. Um, you know, it's a buck, so let's just hang out. You know what I mean? I, I appreciate every dollar, but so yeah, you can become a patron. Um, subscribe and yeah if you're a synth person download tutorial and I'll see you next week peace